Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest today is Karen Willis. She's the founder and executive director of Bridge for Pelvic Pain. She also serves as the interim board chair. She suffered from migraines, TMJ, hypermobility syndrome, and IBS since childhood. And in her early 20s, she developed um, IC, interstitial cystitis. Yes, interstitial cystitis. That's perfect. Interstitial. It is a mouthful. Interstitial cystitis, or IC. Joining us today to talk about pelvic pain. She's going to tell us her story and also talk about the bridge for pelvic pain. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Karen Willis. Thanks so much for having me here today, Neil, and I appreciate the time. And you did kind of touch when you first started this interview about just how many millions of people suffer from chronic pain in general. And so you can you can suffer from pain in, in various parts of your body. So, of course, the, the pelvic floor, the pelvic area is not, <laughs> it's not missing in that, that respect. Um, so there are actually an estimated... 30 million women in the United States who suffer from some form of chronic pelvic pain, and that can include um, pain uh, during or after intercourse, uh, constant chronic genital pain, Um, and you you did talk a little bit about uh, my story, which also included some chronic pelvic, uh, pelvic pain as well as bladder pain. And because of the, the pelvic area, everything is so complex and, and so interconnected, um, it does make sense that if you had pain in, in your bladder area, you might also have uh, pain in other parts of the, the body. And so, yeah, my, my story is, is unfortunately similar to other women in that uh, these conditions are, are pretty uh, isolating, they're, they're pretty devastating, they're not really talked about a whole lot. And so my story began in my mid twenties. I I had a, a full time job. I was going to college. I I thought everything was going to be pretty great in my world. And I started to have what I thought was, you know, recurring yeast infections, which turned into bladder infections, which turned into this constant burning bladder pain. It felt like I had pieces of of glass embedded in my Bladder, yeah, very, very severe, um, uh, chronic and constant, and went from doctor to doctor and underwent some very, very invasive tests. And at that time, it was really a matter of, we're going to tell you what you don't have. It took a very long time to get the official diagnosis of interstitial cystitis or I see. And to be told, well, it's, it's incurable and kind of getting sent on your way was, was needless to say, very devastating as, as somebody um, in their mid-20s. And this is a, a common story. Were you given a, a reason? I mean, it takes all of these years to finally put a diagnosis, to put a name to your condition, and then you find out that there's nothing that can be done about it. Were you at least told why this was happening to you and why it's happening to so many other women? Uh, I really wasn't given a, a reason for that at the time. Um, there were there was a an over-the-counter medication uh, that was pretty new in, on the market at that point that was offered to me as well as at the time they used to do something called bladder insulations. But there wasn't really an answer as to how, you know, you go from, you know, childhood, adolescence through early adulthood and finally um, develop a, a painful bladder disease. Um, so, yeah, there, there weren't a lot of answers at that time. Now, I must say the, the hopeful piece in all of this is that there is a lot more research. There is a, I call it a a web of people throughout the U.S. and the world who are learning the interconnectedness of irritable bowel syndrome, how in families um, you can sometimes uh, see a, a genetic 
uh, connection between fibromyalgia and some of these chronic pelvic pain conditions. Some people, there can be a genetic component. You mentioned fibromyalgia. There is a school of thought that rejects fibromyalgia as an actual disease or an actual condition, uh, basically saying that fibromyalgia is all in the mind. I understand that there are those who, who think that. Now, having this type of pelvic pain, as a, and as you say, the pelvic area being so interconnected with all of our other, you know, body parts, you know, the smallest movement affects everything. You know, you're saying that there's no cause, there's no reason for this to be happening. In some of these invasive tests, were we finding bacteria or, or viruses or pieces of metal or, or anything, organisms, anything at all that could be attributed to this pain. I'm just trying to, to get my listeners to understand the, uh, the severity of this, um, I guess, sometimes impossible to, to prove condition. Yes, and I, and I appreciate that. And that is an important piece is that a, for a lot of these chronic pain conditions, it, it sometimes has felt over the years as if, you know, not, not to throw anybody under the bus, but things have changed now. But it, it did kind of feel as if, you know, doctors or researchers or scientists couldn't figure out what was going on. And it just became kind of this mysterious disease and we're not really sure and and unfortunately because a lot of these conditions happen um, more to women it does sometimes seem easier to say oh it must be all in their head um, but again I, I don't want to leave on a note like that because I I do believe and I and I have met them and, and some of them are part of our our board and our advisory committee, and there are many physical therapists and doctors and integrative care specialists who are all working together, and they're they're actually painting a different picture uh, for some of these conditions um, in the world. Of, oh, sorry, we're going to ask something. Well, I was uh, wanting you to discuss a little bit how you manage your condition and how management of this condition can vary among those who suffer based on how they're suffering from this condition. Yes, and, and so again, it goes without saying these are very, very complex conditions with, with a lot of o other overlapping conditions um, that there's a high likelihood of. Um, so you mentioned um, kind of giving a little bit of my background. So I've had, you know, TMJ and migraines and irritable bowel syndrome since I was a child. Uh, well, I've also recently learned that I have a condition called hypermobility syndrome. And I'm not alone when I think that that is actually the main kind of overarching condition um, that is the cause of also my, my chronic pelvic pain because when you, you think about that part of the body, there are so many nerve bundles and ligaments and muscles and organs in there. And uh, when you have hypermobility syndrome, all of basically all of my joints and ligaments, they don't know uh, where and when to stop. And, and so, uh, I tell everybody I, I probably could have joined the circus and made a lot of money. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, the older I get, um, it does create some pain. And, and so you're, you're asking how, you know, I manage um, all of these conditions or, or how other people do that. So the reason that I was ultimately able to found Bridge for Pelvic Pain, which is a nonprofit based in the United States, and the way that um, I believe a lot of, of chronic pelvic pain patients are, are able to, to function and, and uh, you know, take care of their children and, 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 and some of them are able to work and, and volunteer and, and basically, you know, live their lives. It, it's truly um, because, first of all, people um, believe us. <laughs> um, they, they believe that these conditions are real and that goes a really long way. Another big piece um, in my story, as well as I know other people, is really using an integrative approach to treating these conditions. And when I say that, I mean having a, an entire team of people that you work with. Uh, for, for me personally, that meant 
having counseling and and using acupuncture and using a, a specialized diet um, for the bladder condition. Uh, having a, another team of, of doctors um, just to you know keep keep track of, of everything that that's happening in my body and um, yeah it, I, I feel and others really feel that an integrative approach is really helpful in these complex conditions. Now where can we uh, go online and learn some more about the bridge for pelvic pain? Uh, yeah so. Um, Thank you so much. So website would be bridgeforpelvicpain.org. Right. And um, would we expect to find more, uh, more advice, tips, and tricks on managing chronic pain, uh, no matter the chronic pain, or is it uh, specifically about pelvic pain? It would be a little bit more um, specific about chronic pelvic pain, but there would also be uh, useful information about um, kind of brain retraining exercises, uh, how to embrace some of these integrative uh, care techniques into your treatment plan. Well, I thank you for coming in and sharing with us today, Karen Willis, founder and executive director of Bridge for Pelvic Pain. Thank you so much for hosting me today. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page when you visit our platform at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.